I'm Donna from Indiana, 130,856 people have died. This is unacceptable. One of those people was very close to my family, and we are in pain. I want you to imagine that you are in a hospital, and you are visiting your baby, and that child is on a ventilator fighting for life, and you look up at that screen, and you hear that man who occupies the White House, and you hear him say, I've told my people to cut back on testing, to erase your baby, to keep the numbers down so he will look good. How would you feel? Just imagine. Can you empathize with that? And then, to make it worse, later on you hear the TV and someone says, oh, he was just kidding. That's how we joke at a time like this? Kidding? Is that leadership? And then imagine, imagine maybe one of those people is your, your, your spouse or parent, or grandparent, an older person on a ventilator. And you look up at that TV and you hear on the news that man in the White House saying, oh, the people who are dying, they're old people. They're ready to die. How would you feel about that? Ready to die. No one's life is important to him. Think about that. How would you feel? Good friend of mine, nurse in Long Island, New York. What she has seen, what she has gone through, no human being should see. She's going to live with this for her the rest of her life. Does she get a thank you from the man in the White House? No. She gets thanks at 7 o'clock in the evening by everyone else in the community, but not by the one who should be thanking her the most. And I have a family member. She's an RN, young children. She moved into an apartment for 30 days so she would not risk her family missing her little girl's birthday party. Missing that, the pictures of her saying goodbye to them. It was like watching a soldier go off to war. And did she get a thanks from the man in the White House with the red hat? Oh, no, no, no. Just from the people around her at 7 o'clock in the evening who applaud because she's a hero. What leader does this? Come on, people. Wake up.